Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at the Crazy F411 Express LRS or ELRS all-in-one flight controller. And uh, I'm not just going to show it to you, I've actually got a build and we'll take a look at a little bit of that flight footage. I don't have any flight audio, but we'll talk about why in that flight footage. Uh, and this is probably the most important feature is, well, there might be a couple depending upon who you are or what you're targeting. Uh, it goes two to four S, it's got a 20 amp ESC with Blue J already built in. And maybe what's most important to those of us that are using Express LRS, it's not SPI based anymore. It's UART based so you can freely update it. But I didn't find a Wi-Fi antenna that I expected. You know, the little squiggly line that we oftentimes find on these boards and are on our standalone receivers. I didn't find that on there. So either my old eyes can't see it, or maybe they're using the Express LRS antenna as the Wi-Fi antenna. I didn't know that was a thing. Maybe I missed something somewhere along the way. But it definitely does update uh, via Wi-Fi. I actually used... Uh, the Wi-Fi updating uh, to update and put it on this so I could fly it on my Pyro Drone based Radio Master Zorro. Oh, and these tips, these are tiny tips from tinywoop.com. They've got several different kinds uh, if you're interested in those. I do like those quite a bit. I initially thought they were too pokey uh, and I talked to Jesse a little bit, but then after I said what I said to Jesse, then I kind of went back and went, uh, maybe they're not too pokey. Uh, one more thing about this board that I think we need to talk about before we take a look at the flight footage without flight audio is the fact that it doesn't have a lot of UART. So this isn't going to be a good candidate if you plan on putting GPS or anything else that might need another UART on there. Because uh, you're going to need to use one of the UARTs for your VTX. Um, and I think this is probably a pretty good candidate because it's got both an RX and TX on the UART that you could use for HD type builds. Uh, but if you don't use HD type builds, uh, you could put a standalone uh, analog VTX on there. It's got video in, video out, uh, and uh, the smart audio connection that you would need for there. But uh, something to note with that as well. But let's take a little bit of a closer look on the desk. And now, uh, of course, we've got to weigh it up because I'm a micro guy and everybody wants to know what these things weigh. First up is just the board with the antenna. Do not even plug in USB without attaching your antenna first. Please, always protect that when you have an antenna. Plug it in right away before your USB test. I also encourage everyone with every flight controller you get to plug in the USB. Uh, do your binding. Do your beta flight configuration. Move your OSD stuff around just to kind of make sure that USB connection is going to work and the electronics in there are all working along with your beta flight. Bind it up to your radio is a good idea if I didn't say that already uh, before you start soldering on the board. So the board itself with the antenna, 5.82 grams. If we add a little battery lead that does come with the package. 7.69 grams, and I would think just about all installations are going to require little gummies, so we better weigh it with that. So presumably our all-up build weight before adding solder is just about 8 grams. So they designed this board to be the Crux 35 replacement, and that's probably where I'll use one of these, because I think I have one where the OSD doesn't work in one of my Crux. I have two Crux 35s, uh, but the board isn't aligned as far as the gyro goes to where it would be mounted like a typical all in one, it's actually 45 degrees off. One thing you see here in my beta flight configuration for my little micro that I made is I rotated the sensor alignment 45 degrees on the yaw axis. That uh, set things all right. I had run away a few times before I finally got that sorted out. So if you mount it, let's let's just say by chance you mount it like this uh, in something that's you know got the Crux 35 alignment. Uh, when you put it in your all-in-one flight control, you're going to need to yotate the sensor alignment, you know, 45 degrees, whichever way you go. And then also go in and do your uh, motors to make sure, you know, motor one is, spins motor one, motor two spins motor two, and so on and so forth. Uh, that way you don't have that runaway issue. I had the motors and everything set up right. I just didn't have the sensor alignment before I used it. Now, instead of looking at my board here, I've jumped to the desktop. Uh, so you have the uh, Express LRS boot button. It's right here. Uh, so you would hold that in while you applied power. That puts it in a DFU or boot mode. So if you have a bad flash, you can press that button to recover and flash again. No more soldering jumpers on there. You also have a flight controller boot button. So if beta flight uh, flashing doesn't go well, yep, you got that here. Uh, then we have our, our motors. They've got them labeled here. So M1, M2, M3, and M4. Uh, the USB port is still a micro USB. Uh, we've got TX and RX, and these pads are little. If you didn't notice already, they are very tiny, so you're going to want to have a very, very small tipped end on your soldering iron. Don't be using some big chonker for some really heavy, you know, 12 gauge wire. You want a fine tip end in order to solder on these little tiny pads. 
Uh, this text down here talks a little bit like we've already talked about, uh, but one other thing to notice is the uh, the noticed here as they put on their website. Uh, the Express LRS uh, receiver is connected to TX2 and RX2. I kind of said that backwards according to the text. Uh, in order to not use the, let's say it goes bad for whatever reason, or you want to use Crossfire, or you want to use anything else that needs that UART back. You can disable that uh, and use RX2 and TX2 by doing a jumper um, from five volt to E5, which is right here in blue. So you would just take a little solder, run it across there, make sure it's touching on both pads and it's continuous. Uh, that will then disable the onboard Express LRS and you can use uh, TX2 and RX2 to add your own receiver if that's what you're looking to do. Also note on this print, these pads, they're not really made for uh, soldering motor wires on. Yeah, some of us have done that over the years, but I wouldn't suggest this board if you're going to be doing any motors without connectors. I just don't think it's going to be worth your time. There's a lot of risk because the distance between these pads is so small. It's really made to be the Crux 35 replacement, which that is a quad that comes with uh, motor plugs. So uh, hopefully your build is for that. Uh, otherwise, you might want to fashion some motor plugs. You can try soldering on here. I just, if your eyes aren't really good and your soldering isn't, you know, really good and, and you know, doesn't bleed over to any other pads, you don't want to burn a brand new board. We'll go ahead and scroll down here a bit and note that at this time, this could change, uh, the Express LRS version is 301. I went ahead and flashed it just to make sure it worked. Uh, added in my binding phrase for my radio. I have two different Zora radios. One I still have on Betaflight, or excuse me, on Express LRS version two. And then I have this Pyrodrone edition with the fancy colors and uh, the carbon grips or the carbon casing. Uh, that is my version three Express LRS. Uh, there's a, a bunch of other specs here that you can read if you want to. The, the binding on this is the same as it is on a lot of the all-in-one ones uh, to where you can plug in USB uh, three times um, and then on the third time then it's in binding mode and then you can go to your radio and do your binding which it kind of talks about here. They did a nice thing with these little uh, graphics, these animated images to give you some sort of idea about the light. Uh, the light that we're wanting to watch is this little guy over here that is our Wi-Fi or our receiver, uh, excuse me, our receiver LED right over there. So if it just comes on and stays on, that's successful. If it kind of double flashes, as we see here, that's binding mode. And it's a little bit of a slower solid light on that's no RC input. And then a fast flashing is Wi-Fi mode. Again, I think the Wi-Fi is actually using the uh, antenna with the UFL connector on it uh, as part of its... Um, well, I think it's using that as the antenna because I can't find any other spot on the board where it might. And before we go outside, uh, it does come with a spare set of connectors. Uh, I don't really know why. Um, I find this in a lot of boards and I've never really been able to hypothesize why you would want a second set of connectors. I know if you break a connector, I suppose it's handy, but I've never broken one of these connectors. So it's, it's there anyways, let's get to that flight footage. So as I said, no flight audio in this, uh, mainly because uh, I wasn't planning on uh, doing a much flying on this particular day. It was a really nice day. Uh, my wife had gone, uh, my wife and I had gone for a walk. And then you could probably be able to see over here, she's doing a little bit of, I guess you'd call it gardening or, or taking care of some flowers. Just a really, really kind of early spring, nice day. Uh, mid 60s, relatively low wind, and I was out helping her. And she asked me, "Are you going to fly today?" And I was like, "Well, I hadn't thought about it, but you know, I always keep some batteries charged." And she goes, "Well, you better do it while we got this good weather. Don't know what tomorrow's going to be like." So uh, I guess that's why she and I are such a good match. I love to fly, and she likes to encourage me to fly. Uh, so I did this. Uh, I had this build, and I did a quick and dirty, you know, one battery sort of. Uh, pit tune on it, which, you know, it's okay. Uh, I would like to tighten it up. I might just need to move the uh, feed forward for the stick sensitivity up a little bit to get the feel that I'm looking for. Prop wash isn't too bad. Overall, it's not sloppy. Uh, I do think that I could improve this tune a little bit. Uh, of course, this is wax nail, but I was actually planning to do an HD0 build on this one. And by the way, the frame is the Echo 2.5 from Jack's 3D Printing. So if you're looking for another frame to use, 
uh, Jack 3D Printing. He's got some micros. And I saw on Facebook he's got some new carbon that he seems to be uh, pretty pleased with, at least how it cuts and how it looks. Uh, I think there's going to be some testing as far as how it holds up yet. Uh, but Echo 25, there's also an Echo uh, 20, I believe, that's a 2-inch. I went with a 25, even though I'm running a 2-inch prop, uh, because that second layer stack for HD builds and prop clearance, it can get a little hairy. It would be better if I had the newer uh, Avatar uh, 1S board on here, but I don't. It's the original one that's a little bit thicker, so the connectors and the camera cabling or MIPI cable is out there a little bit. Uh, so I just went with a larger size frame for a smaller prop, and I think it worked out pretty well, and I think it flies pretty nice. I am flying a 530 milliamp GNB battery here, and I don't think it was fully charged. I think it had sat for a little while, so a little bit of that top end voltage had bled off. Uh, but I do see that we're going to get over three minutes of flight fairly easily. And, you know, I'm doing a fair number of punch outs and some uh, turns like I normally do in my particular space and kind of testing out the tune as I wasn't certain I was actually even going to use this footage, but. I'd prefer it had flight audio, but oh, I didn't tell you why it doesn't have flight audio. Huh. My wife was listening to Spotify, so it was playing a lot of commercialized music, and I certainly didn't want to have her shut down her music while she's doing the, the task that she's doing out there just so I could uh, record the flight. So I went ahead and did my flights, and I'm going to use it in this video, and I appreciate the fact that uh, she is... She's just... she's she's It's a reason why we're a good match. You know, we went for a walk, we did a little work, and she was like, I wonder why, I wonder if he's going to go fly, you know, and uh, she knows that flying is kind of a happy space for me, it's something I enjoy, it kind of levels me out, it gets me kind of out whatever headspace, if it's negative, that I might be in, and it, it always brings a smile and a joy. I did have a few crashes, I did have what I think was an ESD desync, easy fix, just went into BL Heli. Uh, not excuse me, went into Blue Jay, uh, actually esc-configurator.com, increased the startup power uh, a couple of notches. I can't even remember what it was. I think I, I increased the startup power to like maybe 1050 or something like that. I think it ships on default by to 1025. So I increased that and no more desyncs and no more crashes. So the frame held up fine to my little crashes. And there we are. There's the end of our flight. And our flight's well over three minutes, as I mentioned previously. I think I forgot to finish up the story about why this is wax nail, and even though I'd planned for HD0, and I've got an HD0, I've actually got a couple of the HD0 1S boards, and people always ask me, how do you wire the 1S boards where you're running multi-cell batteries, you know, you're running 2 and 3S, uh, just wire them to the 5 volt pad. I've been doing that time and time again for various boards, did it with this board too. It's worked out fine for me, either I have magic unicorn dust in my, my veins, or I'm getting lucky. But otherwise, it seems to be working fine. Are you doing the same? I guess that's one thing I would like to know. doesn't matter if it's on this board or not. If you're building HD builds and you're doing multi-cell batteries on those HD builds, are you wiring, or one, are you using the 1S uh, Avatar light or the HD0 Mini light, and are you wiring it to 5 volts? I suspect you are, but you could be adding a BEC of your own maybe to help get it clean power. But uh, so I didn't have a nano camera. So I went out and placed an order for some nano cameras. Uh, fun little quad. I've still got my USB port connected up here. Uh, again, this is the Echo 25 from Jax 3D Printing. It's a, a basic frame. One of the reasons why I like this, and I like this a little bit more for most people over the rocket race, is we've got some motor protection out here. And I think that because of the spacing, Obviously, it's going to be much more HD friendly. The Rocket Race was really analog centric, whereas this is going to be much less centric. You could build this in a bunch of different ways. Again, this is the 25, and there's a connector. Oh, it's the connector right up here that I was especially worried about the props hitting. And you can see, I think the props would hit because that board lines up with that prop. Uh, if I had the uh, smaller version of this frame. So Echo 25, even though I'm running 2-inch props. And I used Gepar C uh, 1102 10,000 kV motors. And they come with a plug on it, so it was a pretty good candidate for this particular build. I, I did a quick Google search for the Crazy F411. I always want to say Crazy B because they did that for a while. Uh, Crazy F411 looks like it's going to be coming in uh, somewhere between... Upper 40s, maybe 48 or 49 dollars, all the way up to 58 or 59 dollars. It looks like most of our Far East shops are have have it now, or you can find it on eBay through XT 
Xnite. I've ordered from them a few times. Uh, they have their own standalone shop as well. AliExpress has got a few listed, Maker Fire, uh, what have you. If you're interested in what I think is probably a pretty decent candidate for uh, an HD micro build, or you've got a Crux 35 that you're looking to replace because your board died, uh, this is a, a candidate that I can suggest. Of course, I've only used it once in the real world, but it's turned out fine so far. I'll put this guy into my Crux 35, slap that PID tune on it, and uh, see how it goes with running 4S, and I can report back on that later. I'll put links down in the video description to the Crazy F411 if you are interested. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget, your HD builds are your wiring to 5 volts using those 1S uh, HD VTXs. I'd really like to know. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.